right hand base of the microscope. You can always check by opening up your field diaphragm to see if you can see any light coming through. And you can always turn up the intensity wheel, which is literally on the opposite side of the light switch to double check that you have light coming through. So we do, which is fantastic. Objectives, condenser, uh, and field diaphragm lens, that all of those are in focus for the focal plane that your sample is on, which for us is going to be a glass slide. So we're gonna slide the little stage holder just out of the way enough that we can get our slide into position and locked into place. The nice thing about this is we can now control the movement of that slide using the X and Y adjustment knobs over on the side. It's the stage to its highest position. So you can use the course wheel on the right or the left. Turning the wheel away from you raises the stage. So we're gonna do that until we can't go any further. And the same thing, you're gonna turn it away from you to raise it to its highest position. So we're gonna make an orientation mark on top of the slide with some felt, making sure it's not on top of our smear. We then wanna double check that our mark on the slide is centered, so we're using our XY to put that mark in the very middle for the 10 times lens. So we don't grab the objectives, we adjust them by using the turret, which has a black grip, and we want to really lock that lens into place. So these guys are binocular. They can move out or come together depending on the width of your eyes. And if you have contacts or you don't need glasses, you'll notice that there's these rubber bits up top. You can leave those just as they are. And if you wear prescription glasses or you're using lab glasses, you can fold those out of the way like so. So since I don't wear glasses, I'm gonna fold them back up. So looking through my ocular lenses, I'm now gonna come back to my course and find focus. And while looking through the oculars, I'm going to slowly lower the stage until that felt marker comes into focus. Really make sure that we can align our lenses properly. It's important here that we adjust our field diaphragm at the very bottom, and we're gonna make sure it's closed all the way. So all the way over to the You right. should see a small bright circle. The truth is though is that circle of light is not really a circle, it's a heptagon with seven sides and we want to be able to see that nice crisp um, seven edges. Remembering to look through the oculars the whole time so we don't miss it and you may need to raise it, you might need to lower it, but teeny tiny movements so that your circle turns into a perfect seven sided heptagon. To center the circle of light, we are going to be using these two large centering screws. And this is the only time that we get to use these centering screws is when we're setting up polar illumination. So remembering to look through the oculars the whole time, you're going to make fine adjustments with these two centering screws to make that circle of light or heptagon of light occupy the very, very middle. move to the field diaphragm because everything's aligned so now it is a matter of getting enough light for contrast and resolution balance. So to adjust the field diaphragm we're going to look through our ocular lenses and we are going to open the field diaphragm so that the entire field of view is lit up. One final adjustment we need to make then is our aperture diaphragm. So situated on the condenser housing that has our condenser lens, we have the diaphragm that controls the amount of light. And we always want to make sure that it is matching the objective lens. So now that we have color illumination set, we're ready to focus on our cells. So the good news is that we're already focused on the top of our slide because we have that orientation mark. So now we need to find our cells. So we're gonna to go to our XY adjustment knobs. Watching our slide, we're going to move the slide over. The 
there's something there that isn't quite in focus. So you want to look through your ocular lenses, and then with your fine focus knob, you're just going to adjust it a teeny tiny bit. Once your cells are in focus, we're now ready to move to the next higher objective lens. So again, using the nice black grip on the turret, we're going to turn to the 40 times objective lens, making sure it's locked into place nice and snug. And then the only other change we need to make is to go back to that aperture diaphragm and make sure that it is turned to 40 because we're using the 40 times objective lens. And then again, teeny tiny fine adjustments, usually turning the knob towards you, lowering the stage slightly. And once again, we have cells in our field of view. So something that's really important as well is to try to ensure you always have a high cell density in the middle of your field of view, because as you change objectives, your field of view gets smaller. So now we're ready for oil immersion. So immersion oil is only ever used for the 100 times objective lens. If oil gets on any other part of the microscope or any other lens that they're not prepared for it, they're not sealed properly, the oil will wreck those lenses. So to add the oil, which is necessary to reduce light refraction, I'm gonna move the turret so that it is between the 40 and the 100 lens, so there's no lens in place. And using our oil, you're gonna add a single drop of oil over top of that bright little spot of light to drop is all you need and then we are going to slide that 100 times lens into place and it will contact the oil that's okay and final adjustment we have to come back to the aperture diaphragm and we're going to have to adjust it to 100 so the 100 times objective oil immersion lens 100 for our aperture so looking for our ocular lenses again you might not see anything. This can be a difficult step. It's really important to just make fine focus adjustments. Once you're finished with your microscope slide, uh, we need to get rid of the slide and take care of the microscope. So first thing we're gonna do is move the turret so that we move away from the 40 and the 100. So we're gonna turn the turret so that we have the four times lens in place because there's no risk that it's gonna to touch the oil. We're gonna take our slide out of the tray. So once the slide is put away, we do need to clean off the oil immersion lens. So we're gonna be using Kim Wipes, which is an optics grade paper. this out of the way a little bit more and then we're going to use a circular motion to wipe the oil off of the oil immersion lens. And we do that three times just to make sure we get all the oil off. Just a gentle slight circular motion to get all the oil off. To finish our cleanup we want to make sure that we have either the ten times or even better, the four times lens because there's a really big gap, so less likely to have damage. We're gonna make sure that the stage doesn't have to be all the way down, but is out of the way enough that it's not gonna hit any of the lenses, and lower the condenser a little bit to also give it some space. We're then gonna close up the field diaphragm, which we didn't do last time, close up the iris diaphragm of the aperture, and turn off our microscope.